a very pleasant warm afternoon to you all there this is jordan 93.9 fm my voice and your voice the voice of the people and the very very special voice of god good afternoon welcome my name is pastor mrs edith atake <laughs> most times people say i don't even remember to give my name <laughs> it is well all our desire is to communicate the word to communicate God's heart's desire, his will, and his purpose to us all. Our aim is to lift God up, that he may draw you all, all of us, to himself, and that his name alone may be magnified in the name of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Today, by the special grace of God, we want to begin to look at how to hear from God proper. Our God is the almighty God. Genesis 1, 26 said, gives us the account of the creation of man. There he said, let us make man in our own image. And we are made in the image of God. God in his infinite wisdom has designed man. He is the potter and we are the clay. And he has, all, he has given us purpose, direction. And where we respond to God then we can find joy and laughter and peace for our soul. But where we don't, then we begin to have sorrows and troubles and problems. So this afternoon, we are saying that for you to hear from God, the first thing is for you to realize whom you are. You must know who God has made you to be, how he has made you powerfully. How you are powerfully and wonderfully made. And where we respond to him, we have joy, we have peace, we have happiness, we have all that is good. The word here means the ability to be able to comprehend. And when we want to define that, we will find out that the starting point is for us to first of all have an examination for you to hear from god you must first of all examine yourself and see what are you hearing now who are you hearing what are you listening to the word here means to get a word from to be informed to learn through to receive to accept it means to collect it means to get from to get hold on so to obtain to perceive in our studies on the children, from there we went on to the teenagers and on marriage, one basic theme that kept going around in all of these topics is the issue of communication. Communication. And we said communication, where negative, brings a lot of problems. The child is misunderstood, the teenager is misunderstood, the husband and the wife misunderstand themselves. And in the business cycles where there is a miscommunication, where you don't hear well, there is a problem. That's why you find people sending higher assassins. If they were understanding each other, that will not arise. But a miscommunication came in. So in all of this, we discover that what we hear, the information we get, what we receive, what we are communicating, what we perceive, may be positive or negative. So I want to say here that the first thing to do is to examine yourself. It calls for a self-examination. Who are you hearing and what are you hearing? And when we say hearing, that means the word. The word, a conversation, a discussion. Who is talking to you? Who are you having a conversation with? Who is your, your partner, a, your tete-a-tete? -tete? Who is your consultant, a confab, a discuss? So we hear by the hearing of the word the spoken word and can also be non-verbal so it can be verbal communication or non-verbal communication and so so when is now verbal we're not we are not talking about voice you hear voices now the problems that have risen between the youth and the parents is they are hearing the voice that say, oh, my parents don't like me. My parents don't love me. My parents don't care. The husband and the wife, oh, she has changed. He has changed. 
Oh, this is not the person I married. Oh, he's now wicked. She's wicked. She's unloving. He's uncaring. A lot of complaints coming. Of course, there are factors, but all communicated in language, in voices. So it's a voice. It's an articulation. How do we articulate our feelings, our words, our thought patterns? It can be murmuring, in shouting, in a statement, in a speech, in a roaring, in an utterance. What are you vocalizing? What are you expressing? How do you express it? In what language? Now, we are, like we have said, it can be positive or negative. Where it is negative, it brings about enemies. Even in the families, you see a lot of families are estranged as a result of poor communication. We've given you the example of Emperor Frederick Severally. How the emperor got two sets of children, all under normal circumstances, the same environment, everything. But the difference was in one, they were, the, the nursing mothers were communicating to them, playing with the children, cuddling them, laughing with them. They make noises, they respond. But the other one was absolute silence. The research at the end of it was that within six months, all of those children that were not spoken to died. And we have said to you severally that communication is very, very important. So today we are bringing a pointer to the fact that for you, for you to hear from God, you must first of all examine yourself and identify what are you hearing, who are you hearing, who is speaking to you. That voice can be telling you you can make it, can tell you cannot make it. You can hear the voice of the enemy telling you, oh, you are done for, you are finished, I'll kill you, I'll finish you. You can hear evil confession, oh, my parents, my generation, Evil altar, family altar. What are you hearing? It can be a voice telling you, you are no good. That person is no good. What voice are you hearing? You must be able to know where you are hear what you are hearing. And be able to differentiate the voice of God and the voice of the devil. That's why we are here this afternoon to explain to you the differences. And of course... It's very easy to know. John 10, 10, it is the thief that has come to steal, to kill, and to destroy. While our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ have come that we have life and have it more abundantly. So any voice that is contrary, any voice that is negative, any voice that does not affirm the greatness that God has ordained for you, that does not affirm your royalty, that does not affirm the special person that you are, a special human being, not made from uh, 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 um, the scientists that say that we evolved from animals. No, from ape. No. But you realize that you are fearfully and wonderfully made. And you are walking in that direction. Then you are on the right path. But if you are hearing any other voice that is telling you, no, be weird. Be naked. Don't go to school. Don't finish school. Don't do well. <laughs> ah, beat that man. Beat that husband. Beat that woman. Don't obey your parents. Don't obey your, your teachers. Don't finish school. Flung. Beat your younger ones. <laughs> A lot of all those negative things know that you are hearing the voice of the devil. And so this afternoon, before you can begin to say, Lord Jesus, have mercy on me. Before you say, oh, Jesus, I need to hear from you. You must first of all examine yourself and see what are you hearing. Yesterday was... <laughs> When I had the news, I was, I was kind of speechless. Speechless in the sense that the statistics was most staggering. The drug abuse initiative was initiated by government yesterday, by the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency. That is to commemorate the United Nations International Day against drug abuse and illicit drug trafficking. So it was held yesterday at the presidency. And um, the theme was share facts on drug save, uh, save lives. We've spoken briefly on it. And we've brought all this is to say that whatever is an abusive tendency in your life, in your relationship, an addiction, whatever it is, we said to you that do away from it, do away with it. Yesterday, there is another gentle reminder. The chairman of the National Drug Enforcement Agency in Nigeria, Brigadier General Buba Marwa, retired, revealed that Nigeria 
was number one in the use of marijuana. Number one. You see, like we are talking about self-examination. Once you know who you are, you are on the path. In fact, 80%, they will say, of the job have been done because you realize whom you are. You accept it. You are not denying. Or like the uh, uh, corruption issue you see here. Government is accepting that this is a problem. And we are bringing it here now as a gentle reminder to say, please, 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 and please. We need to go back and check. We check. We check and we check. Check our children, even the married ones. There are those that are married, but yet they are, they are still smoking. We need to go back because these statistics are very staggering, but they are true. In just five months, the chairman of the NDLEA, that's the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency, Agency Brigadier General Muma, uh, Buba Marwa said that they seized over 90 billion worth of cash and hard drugs in just five months that he has re resumed office. Over 90 billion worth of it. And he also gave the statistics that more than 2,000 180 traffickers were also arrested. More than 2,180 traffickers arrested in just five months. Then he said a staggering amount of over 2.5 million, over 2.5 million of hard drugs was also intercepted. And um, inside these 2,100 offenders, he said already 500 have been jailed. And he said that in use, in use of cannabis globally, that Nigeria have been identified as number one. And his conclusion was that terrorism, kidnapping, the banditry, the armed robbery, the various violent conflicts we see in our country today is not unrelated to the use of these hard drugs. Do you see where we are? And that's not all. Our president, we echo the same when he said that drug more than ever before is the deadliest thing they have to contend with now, more than the fight against insurgency, banditry, other uh, threats to the stability of the country. Our president said that the issue of drug was the deadliest of the fight, even more than against insurgency or that threats. So now the question is, if it is the deadliest, deadliest who are those taking these things? They are, your, they are in your neighborhood. They are in our houses. They are everywhere. So we are bringing this to say that if this be the true, if this be true, which is true because Someone like the chairman and the president cannot come and be telling lies. No, these are the states of the nation, facts on ground. Then we must arise and stop the self-denial in our homes, in our hearts, in our lives. This, again, must be part of what is the problem in the family. Because, you see, like Brigadier General Buba Mara have said here, he said it affects the brain and has resulted in terrorism, kidnapping, banditry, armed robbery, and various violent conflicts in the home. That sudden change of attitude and all that, all these things may not be unconnected. So to move forward, the first thing is a self-examination. You can't, you, nobody can help you. You can't even help yourself if you are living a life, a fake life, if you are living a lie. And when you live a lie, that's the worst thing you can do for yourself. So we must go back and examine ourselves. Which voice? The question this afternoon is, what voice are you hearing? And that voice is under what influence? We have said that there are two, two parties. It's either Satan or God. Then if you are not for Christ Jesus... It means then that it is Satan that is leading you. It means then that it is Satan that is whispering to you, talking to you. 
in that family home, if you don't have family altar, if you don't have God as your source, if you don't have God as your all in all, if you don't wake up and say, let's pray together, know that it is the devil that is ruling that house. So anything that comes from it is the devil. That business you are doing, first of all, they say, what we are doing business with. If it is not a godly one, if you are doing conny, conny, all this illicit business, know that it's a, it's a devil business. Therefore, the devil will be whispering to you, telling you lies. Ah, that person cheated you. That person do this. Or when it comes to sharing the money, because you got it ill-gottenly, fight will come, problem will come. But businesses that are junior, you hardly see that. Because the parties are reasoning well. So this afternoon, the question is, who is speaking to you? Who is who who are you following? Who is leading you? Who is your your chairman? <laughs> because you see, when you look at our youth day in, day out, day in, day out, I told you that we have outreach to the youth. We have outreach to them. And I tell you that for years now, there are some youth who have been trying to bring to learn a trade they're in cloud nine each time you see them ah mommy don't worry <laughs> mommy don't worry I'm, I'm i'm working on it i'm on top of it ah something is happening oh yeah it's okay it's okay <laughs> ah it's all right you see you live a life of self-delusion in whatever area so if these statistics is true youths that are out there please don't even start it if you have not started and if you have started, please be truthful to yourself. Sit down and ask yourself questions. How are you doing? What is your reasoning? Some of you are they dreaming. Serious, they dreaming as a result of all these things. So when you do a self-examination, it will tell you whom you are. And let me read this as a, a check. Second Timothy 3.1 This know that in the last days, when... All these things have taken over. And by these statistics, it means that we have even overtaken America. The American Americans were the number one before in the use of this. They even legalized it in, in some of, like Canada and all that. But for this to come now that Nigeria is now number one, then we need to be very, very careful. Because like the president have said, it is a very, very dangerous trend. And you can't hear from God. If this be true, then we cannot hear from God because... Our thinking will be upside down. We'll be hearing different things. Different, different things will be talking to us. Now, it says that men shall be lovers of their own selves. Check yourself. Do you love God? Do you love your human beings? That child, do you love your mother? Do you love your father? Oh, you are so self-centered. The man, the woman, how are you relating in that relationship? Are you covetous? Covetous? A relationship is supposed to be sharing. How are you doing it? Are you boasters, boasting your iniquity? I will deal with you. I will this. I will that. I will this. Are you proud? Are you blasphemous? Disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, uncleanness, false accusers. There are people who will tell lies, even ministers, pastors, without, without blinking an eye, you will sit down and fabricate lies against a fellow human a minister. Of course, those ones are or the are of the order of Satan, even though you profess Jesus and you are carrying the Bible. It says, incontinent, fierce, despisers, despisers of those that are good. If you are despising people who do good, you are laughing at them, Sister Mary, Brother John, all these things. They know that you are hearing a bad voice. All these things we are listing is from the Bible I'm reading, Second Timothy 3. It means that there is something bad speaking to you. I can't make it. I won't go to school because there are no jobs. There are no this. There are no that. <laughs> All those are bad, bad voices. You are hearing from the pit of hell. You see, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. You are inside the church. You are confessing, talking. But yet, even unbeliever is better than you that's carrying the Bible. You must know then that you are hearing another gospel. You are hearing another thing. You are not hearing correctly. You see, from this sort. You say, go away. Don't have anything to do with them. Evil association. All those that tell you. They, 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 have, they have education. They have jeep. They have jet. They have everything. But they are telling you, don't go to school. Don't disown that. Be weird. They be disobedient. Don't obey authority. They don't mean you well. We have said that again. But this is a gentle reminder. Since our government have said that we should pass the word around, we are passing it again. And we are saying that self-examination is the first point. 
that marriage, that relationship, who is talking to you? Sometimes it's even in-laws or uh, 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 brothers, sisters, friends, ah, your wife. You do this one. Let's remember the Bible, Vashti. It was those that, the men that were sitting with the king that told him, remove her, remove her. <laughs> remove her, ah, she's a bad example. Who is whispering to you? Who is talking to you? And when you know that, and you know that it is the devil talking to you, then you need Jesus. You want to hear from Jesus? That's the first thing. Self-examination. To say that, Jesus, I need you. I need to hear from you. I need you to speak to me. I don't need to be reasoning with my brain. I know it. Yeah, so I'm top of the situation. I'm this, but everybody can see that you are walking in error. Only you cannot see that you are walking in error. Serious self-examination. And the starting point is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He is your maker. He is the potter. It is he that made you. It is he that formed you. You need to go back to him. Go back to him. All these things we are saying. Sometimes maybe you have tried to change. You can't change. We can't make it by human effort. We must go back to the manufacturer. You see even cars. New, new cars. Still leather cars that they make. Once they detect, de de detect an error, they will recall all of them and bring them back to the factory. You need to recall yourself back, 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 back to your maker. The studio lines to call 070-50-86-39-39. Another studio line to call. 090-1842-55-17. God formed you specially. He made you special and you have great potentials. Great potentials. You are not to end the way you want to end. No. He designed marriage. Hello, good afternoon, Church on the Air, Jordan 93.9 FM. Hello. 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 Hello? Hello? The lines are buzzing, but you can't hear you. Please call again. Hello? Hello? Zero seven zero five zero eight six three nine three nine zero seven zero five zero eight six three nine three nine. Hello, hello. Zero seven zero five zero eight six. Three nine three nine zero nine zero one eight four two five five one seven. So please, who is speaking to you? That boy, that girl that is speaking to you, that woman speaking to you in your marriage, that man speaking to you, do they mean you well? Are you sure? That business, are you sure? That thing you want to start. There are those we call uh, uh, destiny helpers and destiny destroyers. Hello. Hi. Hello. Destiny help us when you tell them, oh, this, they will tell you oh, it's possible, it's good, it's good. Others say, ah, you can't do that, you can't attempt that. No, 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 it's too difficult for you, you can't make it. Before you even start, they have even weakened your hand. Hello. 
Hello. Pure water business is a is a is a multi-million dollar business now. But if you ask those who started pure water, they will tell you that they were laughing at them. Ah, you want to start to sell water, water care. Then they sell water again. A lot of businesses like that. That should have taken off, did not take off because there were those who say you can't make it. You can't make it. But there's nothing wrong, of course, people telling you the odds and the coins. Because even the Bible says that before you start anything, take stock and see. Count the cost. So there's nothing wrong. You say, oh, these are the downfalls. These are the this. These are the this. But pray and if you are led. It's different than saying you can't make it at all at all. It's not possible. It can't work. It can't happen. You see? So who is speaking in your life? Who is speaking in your life? You went to school. And when you went to school, who is that person that said to you, oh, let's go and read. Let's go and read. This assignment is difficult, but you can make it. Let's go. I will explain for you. I don't that's how I beg. Don't mind them. And then you withdraw and you flunk school. Who is speaking to you is what we are looking at this afternoon. Our lines are buzzing, but we can't hear you. Hello. The studio lines to call. 0705086339 Hello 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 Good afternoon So you must watch who is speaking to you you must watch who is speaking to you our God is a constructive God. He loves you and wants the best for you. But any other one that seeks to destroy that relationship, that seeks to discourage you from excelling in life. Hello? 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 Good afternoon. Good afternoon. A very happy afternoon to you. Thank you very much. Thank you. My name is Luke. I'm calling mm -hmm. from Buhari. Happy to hear from you, sir. Thank you so much. I want to first and foremost appreciate you for the good work you're doing with your team. God bless you with you. Amen, sir. To God be the glory, sir. I want to say, uh, as a way of contribution to the topics I've been discussed, that every human being must first and foremost identify who he or she listens to. Okay. I mean, there are two kinds of persons um, that are uh, on earth. You have the analyst, you have the catalyst. Okay. The analysts are those who analyze everything and tell you how you can help it. The catalysts are those who look at your deficiency and still see the possibility of you becoming more stronger. Thank you, sir. Number much more, we must understand that even though there are those that are ahead of you in every phase of life, every human being is created equally with, by God with conscience. We have a heart. This, there must be a culture of listening to your heart pondering and meditating on the things you hear before acting on them or before accepting them to yourself completely. When people talk to you, you need to sit down and still listen to your heart, listen to your conscience. You might not be a visionary, you might not be a prophet, you might not be a prophetess, but there is something called instinct, there is something called conscience that God created in you as an ordinary person. You must learn to listen to it. You start it. It's not everything you take book, near and think of. Someone might give you an advice on a good note with a good intention, but that might not be suitable for you at that time, and that might not be what God wants you to do. So the place of sitting down and meditating, look at what that person tells you and ask yourself a question, what is God telling me in my heart with this? I'm sure that the whole words might not be completely uh, false or might not be completely out of point, but then when you do that, you cannot be able to pick the right ones and do the right thing. What is the interest? of this person that I keep going to, what the person wants to do in my life, is it to stop me, to help me, and all of that. Questions like this need to be asked, and I'm sure that it's going to guide not just uh, who are called believers, but even ordinary human beings to know what is right for them to do and for them to be able to take the right decision with the help of God. Excellent contribution. Thank you very much, sir. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for Thank you. Thank you, sir. We celebrate you. Thank you. 
Hello, good afternoon, church on the air. Hello, good afternoon. Good afternoon, sir. Yeah. Okay. Hello. I can hear you, sir. Yeah. Uh, this topic we are just talking about is very, very important. Yes, sir. I think we are yes, sir. You know, one thing about life is that people will talk. Yes, sir. Sometimes people will talk out of love. Sometimes people will talk out of love. I you know one thing. It's important for us. I'm coming here because we put the Bible as a Christian. First of all, to be child of God, give our life to Christ. Allow the Holy Spirit to reside, to live, to dwell in us. But sometimes we say we are Christian, but we do not allow the Holy Spirit of the God of the Lord to reside and to dwell in us. But when the Holy Spirit is dwelling in us, we shut him down. We don't want him to speak. And that's why you see sometimes Christians, I'm talking about now, make so many mistakes. Because uh, when people talk to you, they will advise you, they will advise rightly, they will advise wrongly. So we say to enter into the church with the pastor. So we tell you that there are giants in that land, don't be there. So when you have the Holy Spirit, and you are communicating with the Holy Spirit, and the Spirit of the Lord speaks to you. I'm sure that if you are the kind of Christian that has a listening ear, the Holy Spirit talks to you. You will know the direction that He takes you to. But sometimes, many people don't understand that life is all about living with God. They thought that it's something you can do by your smartness. They do allow God. To, to take charge of your life and you follow him. People need that the day you move out and make some mistakes. You quickly recover yourself. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. Excellent contribution. Thank you very much. The studio lines to call 070 50 86 3939. Hello, Church on the Air, Jordan 93.9 FM. Hello. Hello, sir. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. How are you me? Very well, sir. The basic thing there is that the foundation of the home is the principal thing that determines the character of children. Hello, are you hearing me? I can hear you, sir. I can hear you, sir. Uh-huh. You know, so many homes have become dysfunctional. Mm-hmm. And uh, the children will stray. And by the time they stray, they become cannon fodder in the hands of the criminals. And uh, they must have to survive. So that's the reason why you see criminals all over the place. And it is the structural deformities of our system that has created the unabated state of crime in the society. Thank you very much. Your Parents name, sir? no longer had control over their children. Thank you, sir. And children are so disobedient to their parents. And that's the reason why those parents can no longer afford. A lot of them, that family failure. A lot of them have lost their jobs. They no longer have money to maintain the domestic aspect of the family. Yes, sir. So from there, children, the wives, everybody will stray. They attend all oh, Israel. And what we have to be, criminals all over the place. Your name, sir. Your name, sir. Your name, sir. Please, your name. That was Chief Oga. <laughs> when I hear the word dysfunction, that. <laughs> Hello, good afternoon. Church on the air. <laughs> good afternoon, madam. Thank you, sir. Your name, sir. Yes, sir. My name is Godwin from Kuali. Yes, sir. <laughs> okay. From you Kuali. Know, someone has to have faith to God and grace of God, not to fall prey to all those uh, problems. If you don't have faith in God, you can be manipulated. 
you have to have grace of God. Because these days, for someone to indulge himself in drugs, abuse, and all those things, a lack of moral instruction from the family, churches, and schools, that's supposed to be moral instruction. Don't do this. If you do this, God is to save. God wants you in secret. Even, even if there's nobody there, God is watching you. And also, and I don't mind if the devil was shot. If you don't engage in all those things, you discover that the youth will be indulged in all these uh, drug abuse and whatever. Our parents have to do a lot of work. Uh, from the school, the teachers have to do a lot of job. So that they, they uh, children, or even adults, they will have faith in God and grace of God, not to fall free to all those problems. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. We thank you. We, we cherish your contribution from Kwali. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Our first caller said, hearing from hearing has to do with analysis. And he said there are two different kinds of people, analytic people and those that are catalysts. Analytical people will just analyze issues, discourage you. But catalysts will, of course, do the same analysis for you, but at the same time, encourage you, you to hope. say that you can make it. They will give you hope. They will give you hope. He says, so we must develop the concept of analyzing issue, the first scholar. He said, listen to your heart. He said, if you listen to your heart, there is a check there. God has put something there that gives you the ability to filter the information you receive. So he said, we must learn to listen, learn to listen to our heart, learn to listen to God inside of us, speaking to us. That every information we receive, we must filter them and know what is suitable and what is not suitable. The person may mean well, but it may not be what God intends for you. Say, pick. We must be selective. We must learn to ask questions. Whatever you hear, he say, ask questions. So he said, just don't hear and swallow, no. But as you hear, he said you should pick and ask questions. Ask the right questions. The second caller, caller said, people must talk. Anything you do, people will talk. But that we should allow the Holy Spirit. That when people have finished talking, our ear gates have been given to us to hear. Now it is not left for us to allow the Holy Spirit to speak to us, to communicate to us. That we have an indwelling Holy Spirit listening to God. We must learn to listen to God, listen to our heart. A heart that is not seared. 